We got over 300,000 missing children. That this that, that over half a million children have been trafficked into the United States. This administration released them. Okay, so I don't think people realize the stage is being set for a war against the cartel, according to the Trump campaign. This is because mainly headlines are focusing on people like Matt Gates or the people that Trump is picking. But in reality, you actually have the U.S. and Mexico preparing for legitimate battle. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is Tom Homan has been going on all of these news agencies and sort of laying out a general plan of how they first want to tackle the cartel. It's not really going after them in Mexico, and we'll get to that in a bit. It's mainly going after them and their assets within the United States. So let's watch this clip real fast. But how is this going to work? So how will it work? Well, look, I think the president's been clear on the stage. Uh, as far as the deportation operation, we will prioritize public safety threats and national security threats because they're the biggest, they pose the biggest mm -hmm. danger to, to the United States. Okay, so this is a very important point. Many people still are not understanding that when you hear mass deportations, it does come off from the Trump campaign that it's door to door. The U.S. military is going to be yanking people off the streets. Are you an American citizen? Are you not? No, even Tom Homan has straight up said and the Trump administration, look, it's going to be a targeted deportation. First off, there is a set number out there of illegal immigrants, also cartel members within the prison systems. They would be the first ones to go. But there are also illegal immigrants who already have walking papers that they need to leave the country. That that is upwards in like the millions. So again, these are going to be targeted, I don't want to say strikes, but targeted deportations on the first offense against the cartel. Secure, he's got three rails. So we'll do the deportation operation with the priorities I just talked to you out of the gate. That'd be the priorities. Second thing is secure that border. Lock that border down and catch release and secure the border. Now, obviously, this is a massive part of it, secure the border, but you also heard end catch and release because let's be honest, you could literally just walk on into the country, you were caught and released, and now you can roam free within the country. Now, again, there are members of the cartel who already have walking papers or there are members of the cartel who are in prison systems, but Tom Homan, he kind of said it really fast. They will be the priority, but then second will also be securing the border, but that's also a no brainer. I think a lot of us do want to know, how do you actually intend to secure the border? Are you going to send more military forces or is there going to be a completion of the wall within all of the gaps of the Texas, Mexican border and Arizona and California? Again, we still need to have those answers, but again, the third point is actually rather interesting. The third rail is we got over 300,000 missing children. That this that, that over half a million children have been trafficked into the United States. This administration released them to unvetted sponsors and they can't find 300,000. Okay, so this is the very sad reality. I mean, this is why the U.S. is trying to save and help the children, at least the Trump campaign, is that children, they are a massive moneymaker for the cartel. Unfortunately, a lot of these children do end up in working, not camps, but like sweatshops and sew shops. There's plenty of data and research from U.S. government sites the Department of Labor, uh, there's documentaries on it. But unfortunately, this is a very difficult task for the Trump campaign, but at least it is on the mission set and the mission list that the U.S. knows, look, we have to save these children because if we can save the children, this will actually help decimate the cartel's moneymaker within the U.S. Now, another massive part of this is that Mexico has verbally agreed to at least help the U.S., within the assets in the ports, to tackle the ports and the cargo to make sure that none of that contains illegal substance that eventually gets funneled up to the U.S. Mexico has also verbally agreed to help secure the southern border, not the northern border, but mostly the southern border, where a lot of caravans begin, where a lot of the narcotics come through. Many people don't realize the southern border is just as vital and important as the northern border in Mexico. It's just more sensationalized to the north. Something else that's not really being talked about too much is that the Mexican president is sort of in the middle between the U.S. and China as far as who does she want to choose to work with economically and with security. And Mexico, once again, has verbally stated they do want to work with the U.S. considering they are partners, they share a lot of culture, and they trust the U.S. more. Also, Donald Trump has made it very clear if Mexico does not help out or work with the U.S. in the fight against illegal immigrants, but also the cartel, there will be sanctions. And 
and Mexico does not want to deal with that. So again, I just wanted to point out that Mexico is actually in the middle of almost like a trade war between China and the U.S. So it is good to hear that Mexico at least does want to work with the U.S. as far as trying to suppress the cartel and their movements going into the U.S. But, you know, President Trump has, has promised that he would designate them terrorist organizations. And I, I believe he should and he, and he will. And the reason why they should be designated terrorist organizations, the criminal cartels of Mexico have killed more Americans than every terrorist organization in the world combined. Now, I just said, you know, a quarter million Americans dying from fentanyl poisonings. And, 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 and the, the, up to 4,000 aliens have died crossing the border. So, you know, the, these cartels are, are, are wreaking havoc in this country and, like I said, killed so many, so many Americans. Now, this right here is probably one of the most important steps when it comes to the cartel and the war against the cartel is the designation of the cartel as a terror organization. Now, this is a massive step. This is a very scary step because the second you do that, the cartel are already in the United States and they can... Do whatever they want. The cartel, if you're going to call them terror organization, we're going to act like a terror organization. Um, not that they don't already do so, but one thing I want to point out is that it's a very scary thought to know that they will already be behind enemy lines. So the U.S. will have to somehow figure out how they're going to do this and also be prepared for the ramifications. Now, whether that means deploying more military within certain cities or have all government entities working together, this is why the U.S. Um, wants to and needs to designate them as a terror organization because this will allow for all government entities within the security sector and cyber sectors to all work together and tackle the issue of the cartel within the United States. Now, I've used this example before, but before the U.S. was going after the Houthis in Yemen, the Houthis were not designated as a terror organization. The reason why the Biden administration took them off the terror list was to help with the humanitarian aid with the country. However, that allowed the Houthis to sort of run their own cartel and stealing humanitarian aid and doing some pretty crazy stuff in Yemen. The second that they were put back on the terror list, all of a sudden you see all government entities working together and taking out the Houthis left and right and stopping them from hurting their own people and other people in the area to include civilian vessels and U.S. military vessels. So you can see the power in designating an organization as a terror organization, which is why the U.S. wants to do that with the cartel, because you can see in real time what it's doing to the Houthis. It's pretty much tying their hands behind their back and not allowing them to get anything done, at least with full effectiveness.